You guys, first of all, make the loudest fucking noise for Jeff Ross and everybody on this show tonight because this is the real deal. Sebastian and Nick and Big J and Elias, everybody. Come on, make some noise for everybody back there. I watched something that was actually really... Uh, you know, every once in a while you have a, a, a visceral reaction watching something on TV. A visceral reaction is where something impacts you to where you react out loud and you can't even really contain it. You can actually be fucking by yourself and you have a moment where something happens and you turn to nobody on the couch next to you. This is fucking, I'm all alone. This is crazy. I had one of those moments. So basically, here's what happened. I was watching, it was uh, 2020, was doing this entire uh, program. It was all about uh, couples that had experienced uh, strange moments while they were uh, preparing to get married. And then as they were interviewing this one couple, they captured something by mistake, but they ended up showing it. And I think it was one of the most dynamic things I've ever seen on TV. Husband and wife sitting on the couch, and all they wanted was for them to sit together and look at some old photos, and the camera was going to just pan by, and the narrator would tell us a little bit about them, and here's what happened while they were looking at pictures. The wife took one picture out of the shoebox. She got very excited about this one picture, and she was like, oh, this is my favorite memory. I love this. This is, oh, this is me when I was four years old. I went to Disney World with my family. We had an amazing bonding experience, my mom and dad and I, and she was so effervescent and excited about this picture. Then they show her husband, and he's literally just staring. He finally just takes it out of her hand, doesn't even ask, looks at it, and he goes, this is crazy, this is unbelievable. She goes, what, babe? He goes, I went to Disney World with my family when I was four years old, and I'm standing right next to you in this picture. And then, yeah, no, they literally showed the picture. They were standing shoulder to shoulder, waiting for a ride, taking two separate pictures with their family, not realizing they're standing next to the love of each other's life. They would go their own way for 20 years, get married. 30 years later, they would find out they have a picture together when they were little kids. And yeah, it really is special. I thought the only thing that could make that wow. moment more uncanny and incredible and cool is if that couple was murdered. <laughs> yep, if they were murdered and the guy that killed them was also in the picture. <laughs> when he was four years old. <laughs> He's just on a ride in the background, staring out. <laughs> making that I'm gonna kill you in three decades face. <clears throat> Greatest feeling in the world when you know the person that you're with is truly your better half, right? You look at them every once in a while, you're like, yes! This is the person I want to be with. Dynamic duo, right here, look at us. Great feeling. Worst feeling in the world when you look at that person and you're like, fuck me, what am I doing? <laughs> All right, then you look again, still them. Shit! Then you, then you push your own eyeballs into your brain, hoping they'll be gone, and fuck karma. What did I do? <laughs> if you want to know if you're with the right person, if you're saying, Dane Cook, I'm not sure. Are there any little test things that I can do to see if I'm in a relationship that's really going the distance? Yes, I'm going to help you tonight. That's what I've come here to do. I've, I've come here to help you to fortify your relationship, and if, you're, if you don't pass these few little tests, you should break up tonight. Um, okay, here's a simple one you can do. Sit on the couch, right? Do this. Sit on the couch, watch your favorite TV show. If the person that you are in love with, if they walk into the room, and walk by the TV. Here's how you know you're in love. If the second they come in the room, you smile and you start talking in fucked up voices that only the two of you appreciate, right? Uh, are you coming to watch TV with me? Yeah. Are we gonna eat chips and be robot people? That's love, right? When you act like fucking idiots with each other. <laughs> You're not in love if when that person comes in and walks by the TV, if you don't fucking look at them at all. <laughs> until they get out of the room. The second they walk around that corner, they knew this is your reaction. The second they leave the room, you go like this. <laughs> Another way you can test it, wake up tomorrow morning, look right at the person you're with. That's all you have to do. Just open up your eyes and look right at them and feel whatever the fuck you're feeling for like three seconds. You get three seconds of actual truth about how you feel about that person before you start covering up your own bullshit with your own fuck like, oh, no, we're gonna take a road trip and it's gonna, we're gonna get a pet ferret and it's gonna get better and we're gonna uh, paint a room to music. <laughs> 
three seconds. Here's how you know you're absolutely with the wrong person. If you if you open up your eyes and your first instinct is to spit in their face. <laughs> if you want to spit them awake, that is a terrible... Spit them awake. <laughs> Just listen to the sound of your voice when you communicate with the person you're with. When you are truly in love, there's a certain uh, musicality almost in your voice. There's a certain rhythm. I'll, sh I'll show you. Like, let's say the person you're with calls your name from across the house. Just the way you respond back to, they call your name, like, just give me a minute, I'll be right there. <laughs> Do you hear that? That's love. Just two more minutes, I'm almost done. I'm almost finished. That's love in your voice. You're not in love if they call your name and you respond like this. What? <laughs> Just fucking text me! I can't understand you! Jesus fucking Christ! What? Yes, I want a grilled cheese, thank you! That's love too. When the person you're with makes you a grilled cheese, that's fucking love, a grilled cheese. If they make you a tuna fish sandwich, get the fuck out. They don't care. <laughs> I think that, uh, I think it's really important to have a very uh, strong sexual relationship. I think that, yeah. I think that you need to be able to give the person that you're with every single thing that they want sexually and vice versa. I think that's part of the deal. If we're going to love each other, potentially be together for the rest of our lives, you're going to do the weird, wacky shit to my body that I enjoy, and I'm going to spit on a weird part of you every once in a while. <laughs> and it has to go, I'm telling you, it has to be mutual right there. Whatever it is that that other person wants. Now, you might be saying, hold on, Dane Cook, wait a second. Uh, I don't like uh, feet. I don't, like feet. I, don't, I don't like my own feet, I don't like feet are gross, I don't like feet at all. But what if the person you meet and fall deeply in love with, a year down the line, you find out they're kinky little fetish, they want their feet sucked. You're gonna suck a fucking foot. <laughs> That's all there is to it, you're gonna get a baby wipe, you're gonna wash off a foot, and you're gonna suck it like it's a dick with five little dicks at the tip. Yeah, like it's a cock with an ankle, and you're gonna suck it for love. You're gonna say the things that you know that they like to hear that turn up. This little piggy went to the market. <laughs> this little piggy went in my throat. Oh, shit. Oh, that piggy went deep in mama's throat. Ooh. That piggy went to the back of the barn. Hey, by the way, can we just talk about this? What the fuck was that piggy thing? What did it mean? What did it represent? Was it, it wasn't teaching us anything. It's, my mom would do that. She would throw the blanket, blanket off and she would start wiggling. What was it? Who came up with this? And why was there suddenly a piggy sent out for roast beef? <laughs> and I'm a little kid. They send this pig up for roast beef. And then the next little piggy, you know what that pig had? Do you remember? Fucking none. I'm about to go to sleep and there's a dying pig at the end of my foot. But this other fuckface is storing up on roast beef, evidently. You have to give the person that you're with. Every once in a while, you gotta like just even do things that maybe you're not completely comfortable with, you know, just to impress them. Because after a few years, you start to know each other, right? Isn't that the truth? Like, I, you guys, I can see you guys have been. To, how long have you two been uh, about to break up? <laughs> I got it. Too long. <laughs> You've been together for a little bit. How long? 15 fucking years. Just shoot each other. <laughs> Get it over with. <laughs> 15 years. Obviously, uh, I'm sure during 15 year period, there's sometimes it's contentious. There's fighting that takes place, right? Sometimes you go at each other. Sometimes there's some name calling. I want to help you with one thing right now. If you're going to do name calling, plan the names you're going to call the other person in advance. <laughs> Know what you're gonna call them, okay? Because sometimes you're in the moment, you just start blurting out shit. Like, guys, there's one word you can never say during an argument. We know it begins with a C, ends with an unt. You can't use this word. No. Once you go see unt, you are doomed. 
You can't say the C word. Now, now if you're saying, hold on, Dane Cook, what if I'm going to blurt it out and I don't really know I'm going to, or I can't help it and I feel like I'm going to say it, and, and I'm just going to say, what do I do in that moment? This is what you're going to do. Ready? If you are going to say the C word, I got you covered right here. Say it with a Scottish accent. <laughs> It just takes the edge off, just enough. Right now, no, no, you left the leash at the dog park, you fucking cunt! <laughs> 15 years ago, so you guys met in real life 15 years ago. You didn't meet through some kind of online scene. Because now you can meet, there's so many ways to meet people. Different sites for specific. You can go to meet somebody Christian on Christian Mingle. You can go to J-Date, meet somebody of Jewish descent. You can go to Irish Connect, meet somebody who's Irish. Japan Cupid, if you want to meet somebody Japanese. If you want to meet somebody black, freecreditscore.com. There is just so many... <laughs> Some of these websites, I've tried, some of them were a little confusing. I tried Ancestry.com, terrible site for dating. I, I'm meeting my aunt for lunch next week, and that is so fucking weird. I've heard that all the time. I like that uh, with like Tinder and shit like that. You go, you go into the preferences. This is what's so crazy. You go into the preferences and you can choose the parameters of the kind of person you want to, it's like fucking Build-A-Bear for a human being. <laughs> right, you can go in there, you can uh, put it on, uh, you can search men, women, both, if you're a lost soul. <laughs> then you go to age range and you can move the slider to search within whatever demographic you're interested. So you can search anywhere from 18 to uh, 50, right there. Tinder letting you know life ends at 50. <laughs> yeah. If you're 51, fucking kill yourself. Nobody's searching for you, you relic. <laughs> and then you can put, put it on distance, and it knows the GPS coordinates of your phone, so you can put the distance. How far are you willing to travel for love, potentially? How much gas do you have in your tank for love? <laughs> I tried it. I really was like fascinated. I went in one day, I you know, put the settings, I searched uh, women, and then for age range, I set that to uh, 18 to 19. Stop it. And then for distance, I put that on 50 feet, and it's... Stop it. <laughs> Let's just say this too. Uber is just a pimp delivery service for Tinder bitches. Can we just fucking admit that right now? Uber is shuffling Tinder whores all over town. Tinder and Groupon should do a fucking thing together. Some kind of like this kind of rate. Make a fortune off my house alone. <laughs> I think it's so wild that you can, you can absolutely be in a relationship and then some people I know I mean, I, I've had a couple of, even in my own relationship, you, you, you get some barn burners once in a while, right? You go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you start really going at each other, all your insecurities, all that shit come out. This is what I've learned about fighting in relationships. Every single argument is exactly the same. Different topics, but the way you approach it and all the insecurity, all arguments the same except for the first argument you have together as a, as a couple. The first argument you have completely different from all the rest of the arguments. Why? because you can't really argue the way that you want to argue during the first argument. Because you don't want to show that side of yourself yet. Not during the first argument. First argument, the entire tone, the way you approach it, completely unique. You'll never be that person again. You kind of come at that first argument, you're like, yeah, no, that's not how you make pasta. <laughs> fuck, uh, fuck, you fucked it up, shit. Oh, it's ruined, fuck you, that's crazy. You don't know how to make pasta? Fuck! It's all right, fuck. Some people I know actually have to go to uh, couples therapy. I've actually had friends go to couples therapy. I would not recommend that if you're thinking about doing it. I don't think it actually helps save your relationship or marriage. I think it actually turns you into fucking weird robots. Seriously. Because then what happens when you go to couples therapy is they teach you uh, how to communicate in ways that maybe you were not aware of and they give you uh, tools that you lack. They, you know, help you come up with, you know, a little tool shed so that you can, you know, use those little parameters. And it just kind of takes you out of it. That's the weird thing. And you lose you, and now you have to 
follow these little parameters. So whatever the situation is, you have to approach it using the, right? You have to walk into, hey, um, uh, is now a good time? I'd love to talk to you, but if it's not a good time, I can come back in a little bit. Now's a good time? Great, thank you very much, I love you. Um, I was just in the kitchen and I noticed there was uh, dishes still in the sink that were dirty. And when you and I were in there uh, this morning as a couple, as one, we were discussing the dishes that were there. And you you stated to me that you would take care of all the dirty dishes. And I was very appreciative. That made me feel uh, like we were being collaborative and communicative. Then you left the kitchen and the dishes weren't completed. You came back into the kitchen an hour later, you added more dishes and you still didn't complete the dirty dishes. And then you left again. And at that point I felt disenfranchised. Um, I was encumbered. I felt like we weren't on the same love bridge, uh, speaking the same love language that we had created in, in unison as one. Uh, also, I noticed my favorite big blue cup was in the sink and I thought maybe you would at least wash that because tonight's pizza night, you know, I like cola and I like to drink it in celebration of us. Um, so maybe you could just speak to why you didn't at least wash the big blue cup. I'm going to stop talking now. I'm only going to listen and receive your truth. And thank you so much for listening to me. I love you very much. I appreciate it. I'm going to listen to you. Thank you. Yes, uh, you know what? I can actually tell you exactly why I didn't uh, wash the dishes or the cup. I just want to say this for the record, too. Just the way you came at me with this was very rapey, if I could just say that. It was like a verbal rape, just for the record. Um, yeah, actually, the reason I didn't wash the uh, big blue cup was a couple months back, I was cleaning uh, your office. I was helping you, doing something nice for you. And I saw a picture of your ex-girlfriend. And in the picture, she was drinking out of that big blue cup. So fuck that bitch and fuck your cup. I say you go the other way with it. Here's the thing. I say when you're in an argument, when you're pissed off at each other, don't try to be something you're not. Don't try to, you know, suppress. You'll, you'll just end up resenting later on. I say just get it all the fuck out right there. Even if it's just you have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and you say the craziest shit. Just in that moment, just really, hey, you know what? I just want to fucking shit in your mouth and hold your head shut and make you eat my fucking shit. Oh really? Is that what you want to do? I want to take my period blood and smear it down your face like Apocalypto. Because you're a moron man. You're a man who's a moron. <laughs> Where do you go from there? Up. <laughs> it's not going to get any worse. 20 minutes later, you're just eating chips, laughing about it. I can't believe I said I was going to shit in your mouth. <laughs> I know, you wouldn't do that, but if you did... <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm not having my period. <laughs> I don't know why people... I don't know, I don't know why people still get married in the first... I don't, I don't get it. I think just stay together, be there for each other, but the whole thing of marriage is... I don't even know if anybody really even truly believes in marriage anymore, like in that way of excitement. Like, okay, ready? I, I don't think you do because here's anybody here receiving uh, a wedding invitation in the mail. Ready? Fuck. <laughs> fuck, when is it? Before you even know who it is, just when the fuck is this? July 3rd. Motherfucker, July 3rd. Where is it at? Yosemite. I gotta go to Yosemite on July 3rd. I don't even know who's getting married because I don't know fucking calligraphy. Who is this? Does I say Karen or Keith? Yosemite, outdoor wedding. Oh, that's not gonna be hot as fuck at Yosemite outside. And then there's always like a weird thing on the invitation. Like, Please bring a sword and sheath as we'll be having a Game of Thrones style after party. Oh, that's great. How am I gonna get a sword and sheath on the fucking plane? What is this? You gotta go, it's just uncomfortable. You go to somebody's wedding, and you have to, usually you're sitting in a house of worship that isn't yours, right? feel like you're cheating on your religion, right? Just looking around. Are those pinatas? <laughs> is that a statue of a llama? What is this place? Right? And you have those weird little conversations that are uncomfortable with the people sitting next to you. What's that? Uh, yeah, no, lovely day for a, yeah, it is a lovely day for a ceremony. I was just, yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> yeah. Like I wasn't aware that it was a fucking lovely, yeah, yeah. I thought we were in the eye of a hurricane. I didn't realize that it was actually a full-on lovely day. I just thought it was a few minutes of bliss before anarchy. <laughs> What's that? Wait, oh, you're from Seattle? Yeah, no, California. <laughs> All right, that was great. That was interesting. Fuck, regions. What's up, regions? Well, you know, you just want to gossip. That's all we want to do. Even, even in this moment, you just want to be like, hey, hey, I heard that the bride has herpes. Lovely day. Did you hear that? The bride's got herpes? 
Regents, do you know that? Roger Herbert, yeah. Oh. And you sit there and you watch the bride and groom facing each other. Just the, I don't even like the way they face each other, holding tips of fingers. Right? They stand across from each other, just holding the fucking very tips of each other's fingers. Which is just weird. You'll never hold hands like... You'll never be in a situation... Baby, there's a fire! Grab the tips of my fucking fingers, we can get out of here! They're just staring. They'll never be dressed like that again. It's very weird. He looks like, you know, a spy. She looks like she was just toilet papered at Halloween. She's wearing a fucking fencing mask. <laughs> then they have to do vows. That's what I don't understand. Vows. They do vows to each other. You can't even keep fucking promises to yourself. You've been telling yourself since college you're gonna lose 15 fucking pounds. You don't. You're gonna vow to protect their hopes and dreams? You fucking liar. And the vows are all, now they're all written specifically for each other because nobody does traditional old school vows. Now it's like just between them kind of, if you're ever absorbed into another dimension, I will learn science. I will open up the portal and I will find you this, I promise thee. Right, old English for no fucking reason. Thus unto mine eyes doth I protesteth my loveth. What? Here's how you know you didn't believe in the bride and groom in the first place. When they come out of the church and you have the uh, dry rice, if you throw it like this, <laughs> you whip it. <laughs> I had one friend, I thought this was really brilliant, got married in Maui and gave you the option if you want to go, then great. But if not, he sent everybody a link and an email with the date and time. And all you do is click the link. He had a company live streaming it in glorious HD while the sun was setting and I couldn't believe it. I was actually sitting there watching one of my best friends. I'm sitting at home, I'm halfway across the world watching an absolutely gorgeous, beautiful ceremony. And I remember I was like, it was emotional. I was like, I'm watching and I'm crying and I'm masturbating and it was just, oh. <laughs> 15 years, you guys, uh, you get some kids? Yeah, how many kids? Two, how many abortions? <laughs> two, okay. Uh, two and two, just split it up. <laughs> I don't know, I think I want kids, but I don't know, I don't want a stupid kid. I don't want one of those kids that like, you know like every five years there's that kid on the news that ends up like wedged between two rocks. I don't want that, whose kid is that? That's the worst fucking kid. All the fucking news crews around the world are there. Everybody's live watching this kid, and they're pouring Crisco on your son, and they're tr they're you know trying to get him, make him slick. They're trying to slick him up because he's in a crevasse between two fucking rocks. Right? They just whine, and then they just get really quiet for like 20 minutes and just look around. I don't want that fucking kid. Then for the rest of your life, your son's nickname is Boulder Boy because they put him on People Magazine. Boulder Boy, 10 years later. What's Boulder Boy doing? His arms stayed like that. He makes a great living stocking shelves. <laughs> fucking Boulder Boy. <laughs> you guys watch a little bit of porn together once in a while? Is that something you guys like to do? Yeah, when things get frisky? Come on, 15 years in, you gotta keep it interesting, right? You, do some, you ever do any role playing? You like to do some role playing from time to time? Yeah, role playing's fun. If you guys ever do any role playing, it's it's the greatest, right? You do some role playing. If you've never done it, I can explain role playing really simply. If you've never done it, you're saying, damn, a little trepidatious. I don't know role playing. Uh, normally, what'll happen is the woman, the girl, will dress up like uh, you know, like a princess, right? and then the guy will dress as a guy that wants to fuck a princess. which is basically what I'm wearing right now. I am... <laughs> hey. The fuck just happened, Spotlight. Don't do that. I'm worried about you up there. You okay, Spotty? Did you sneeze? <laughs> so
So seriously, what do you guys like to do? What do you, you go, okay, if you're going to go to a porn site, let me help you guys. If you're a new couple, you're saying, Dane, we want to watch a little porn together. We're feeling a little frisky. We want to do some fun stuff. Then you want to go to like uh, you porn, right? You want to go to uh, uh, what? Red tube. Red tube's kind of fun. The right? Okay, Pornhub, that's good. You never want to go to like, don't start with a, don't go to like, uh, we can never go back.com. That's not a good site. Don't go to unseethisbitch.org. That's. Right? You gotta go. First of all, if you haven't gone to a porn site recently, go home tonight and check them out. They look fantastic. They've really grown exponentially over the last several years, right? Not like if you went to a porn, 10 years ago, remember you tried to go to a porn site, you couldn't even enjoy it because you couldn't get into the site. Maybe you try to get in and windows would constantly block your way, pop up, right? Weird fucking windows would open, but it'd be like a window with close up of a woman's eye with lightning in it, trying to sell you police scanners. A llama with a gavel, need a lawyer, just weird shit. Then windows would, you'd hear moaning coming from no, oh, what the fuck, where was that? Oh, oh, I didn't press play anywhere. Where the fuck are you? Oh, oh, there's gotta be a little window hiding behind my recycle bin. What the fuck? Where did it go? A little miniaturized window. Oh, the volume's down, but it got louder. What the fuck is this? Oh, is somebody fucking in my house and throwing their voice at my computer? Oh, right, the computer's off, okay? This shouldn't be doing anything. Oh, am I doing it? I think I'm doing it. Oh, I'm doing it. I've been doing it the whole time. Fuck, it's me. Why am I doing this? Oh. What I like now about porn sites is it's real easy to find whatever it is that you're looking for, right? Remember you try to go in like 10 years ago? You didn't even know you were, you just click on something. You're like, all right, here we go. I don't know what the I don't know if somebody's going to die during this. Or... Is this like, is this like regular sized people? You just didn't know. <laughs> what it was. Now you go in, everything's in columns, and there's Yelp reviews, and uh, Rotten Tomato stores, and all the videos are geotagged, and oh, it's great. Sensational. Let's talk a little bit about the adult feature films that are on the site because, I mean, honestly, they look great. Really. I mean, they're shot on modern technology. They're not like grainy and weird, like beautiful, like digital red cam. And the cinematography is uh, aesthetically pleasing to the eye, really delightful. And the actors that they've hired are giving what I would call uh, nuanced performances. They care about character development. And the plot lines are really, uh, you know, in enveloping and exciting. I'll give you an example. I picked a video recently. I'm on my back. I'm ready to get down to business. After about four or five minutes, I was so into it, I'm on my belly. Just fucking watching. Eating Trader Joe trail mix. You know what porn is good when you sit through the end credits. That's a good porn. You sit through the end, maybe there'll be one more little bonus feature at the very end. You never know. You don't want to go anywhere. Maybe Nick Fury will make an appearance. Right? You go in now and the sites look so fantastic. There's, okay, here's what you're gonna do. You go in and you go to the categories, right? Categories is where you go in and decide what is it that I'm really interested in watching tonight. And if you haven't gone to the categories recently, uh, they've added a lot of shit. Categories used to be very limited. If you went to categories eight, nine years ago, it was very sparse, right? You had like what? Asian, anal, threesome, Latina. That's about it. That was it. Go home tonight, open up the categories. It's like the fucking menu at Cheesecake Factory. It's a lot. <laughs> it's almost overwhelming. And then there's certain uh, categories in there that I won't even click on just based on the name. I'm like, I don't really know what's in that. Right? There's one category, Mature. I don't know what the fuck is in Mature. This is already, the main, main page is Mature. What's in Mature that's more than what's happening out here? I don't know what's in there, but out here there's a Pokemon getting fucked by a demon crying and jizzing rainbow. And that's out here. That's not even immature. To me, that is indicative of mature. What is mature? Is it just very, very old people? I don't understand this. Right? Well, MILFs? Is that one that you like to watch? You like to watch MILFs? What is the category that uh, people have watched recently? Is there anything that like has stood out that you thought was kind of entertaining? Which one? Bukaki? 
Is there a Dane Cook category? <laughs> I wish your girl asked me that and not you, but... <laughs> Dude, you just sent fucking shivers down my fucking spine and into my asshole where it clenched itself shut. Is there a Dane Cook category? Oh, oh and you sounded like you were from the Civil War era. Which didn't help. Is there a Dane Cook category? <laughs> You're regretting it, I'm fucking regretting it because I just told everybody here what you said. I thought we were going to talk about a Bukaki machine and this fucking creeper over here. It's our Dean category! Please don't ever talk like that again. You can't talk like that anymore, okay? <laughs> do you watch a little porn from time to time? I'll talk to you for a little bit. What do you like? What do you enjoy, okay? Because obviously you're alone and. You're a single man, yeah. And what do you like to watch? It's okay. What do you? It's like your night off. Girls on girls. Oh shit. Uh, girls on girls. That we call that classic cuts. It's like uh, a hug from Nana. It's just like ah, uh, I'm home again. Girls on girls. Right? You can't help but just smile. Just want to sit there, eat some Reese's pieces. <laughs> I don't know, dude, you look kind of like a creeper. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. There's something about you. I bet you fucking buried bodies off the Zizix exit on the way to Vegas or some shit. There's like, I don't know, man. There's something really, they put the lights on here. Everybody looks really respectable. I don't know, I think I played as you in Grand Theft Auto the other day, but that's another story. But this dude's a fucking creeper, McCre all right. Yeah, there you go. Your friends are, yeah, obviously, your friends are fucking, they left already, dude. They're like, oh, we're gonna sit a few rows back. Let's, let's, let's leave Dougie at the fucking show. You know he's gonna yell some shit out that nobody wants to hear. You're walking home? Yeah, okay. Does that have a dying cook category? Oh, that's gonna be in my fucking dreams tonight, you fucking weirdo. Oh, I was, I was looking forward to Bukaki talk, and then all of a sudden this guy just put the fucking fear of God into me with his weird jowls talk. Anyway, nice meeting you. Uh, hey, if I end up dead in an alleyway tonight, can we start with this fucking guy wearing a Bad News Bears shirt from 1978? And, a, and the shortest shorts I've ever fucking seen? Oh my god, what are you fucking Yogi Bear? Get a real outfit. Holy shit. Oddball is right. <laughs> Go meet your friends. Get out of here. You can go. I think the last category that I'm going to talk about real quick, if you've never seen... You ever watch Gang Bang? You ever seen a Gang Bang? Okay, for anybody who's never seen it, I'm going to... I have to tell you this real quick. For If you've never seen an entire... if you Because usually you probably watch it for a minute and then you'd be like, i got to get the fuck out of here. This is kind of overwhelming. If you've never seen Gang Bang, here's the way it goes down, okay? Uh, traditionally, what will happen is... Uh, there's a, normally a woman uh, laying on a, you know, on a futon. <laughs> right? She's got six guys orbiting her. Everybody's in a different orifice, right? There's always that one guy too many who doesn't have a place to go. He's just kind of hanging on the back. You know that guy? He's just looking over everybody. He's just a fucking... He looks like you, actually. He's just a fucking sweaty, smarmy... If anybody needs a break, I made cornbread. <laughs> Is there a Dane Cook category? Oh. <laughs> the finale of the gangbang, the third act, if I may, all six guys will ejaculate at the same time. Which, uh, that's pretty impressive right there. No shit, that's not easy to organize right there. Six guys coming on cue, that is like Cirque du Soleil level of rehearsal to get that right. That's like special op shit. Those guys gotta be synced up. Good, everybody good? Everybody's already? Jonathan? Yeah, all right, it's go time. Michael, headbutt. <laughs> I'll see you on the ground. Good, good, check, check. All right, here we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Guys, guys, keep breath. We're a no-go on Frankie. Frankie? Nope, guys. Nope, we're a no-go. Frankie didn't drink his fucking pineapple juice. We are gonna circle back. Frankie, let's fucking go. We're on the button over here, buddy. Thank you guys very much, everybody. Thank you for being a part of Oddball. Have a great, great night. I'll see you guys.